world wide war against crime, there are men and women trained to sink their own identity in the international underworld. They work alone, in danger and in shadow, unrecognized by friend and enemy alike. They are the operators of the almost legendary Ghost Squad. Am I supposed to recognize him? No, he's a small-time crook named Elijah Jones. Elijah? Where'd he get that from? I don't know. His mother must have been a God-fearing woman. But Elijah wasn't that way at all. He spent most of his life in Boston prison. Born crook. It's common enough type. The only different thing about this one's his name. It's not quite George too hard on him. Elijah did, in fact, reform for a while, and for the oldest reason in the world. He married a good woman. And how long did that last? The marriage is still on. The reform lasted about two years. He got a job as a motor mechanic. He was quite good at that. And he had a small talent for picking locks. So what happened? He rifled a petty cash box, I suppose. Something like that, some petty theft. But the magistrate still gave him a chance. So he's out. No, he's in. Five years for taking part in a safe robbery not long after this. He was the only one caught. The haul was 12,000 pounds. 12,000? He was out of his league, wasn't he? Way out. And that is what interests me about Mr. Elijah Jones. That and this. France, if you don't recognize it. The rings around six major cities where 73 jobs netted someone close on a million pounds. That's quite an organization, but what's that got to do with Jones? I'm not sure yet. What's it got to do with us if it comes to that? This. Same pattern here. And on the last one of these jobs, Mr. Jones was caught. You mean there's a gang operating in both countries? They rather jumped the gun on the common market, didn't they? Yeah, no, these aren't the same people. The Deuxième Bureau rounded up the whole gang in France. And then who are our boys? Imitators? Not exactly, but there is a connection, I think. You see, this was no ordinary criminal mob. The leader turned out to be a retired and highly respected French general. General? Well, wasn't his pension enough? Adequate, but he wanted funds for a political organization. I see. Oh, yes. Something like that. Their aim was to collect funds and institute a pattern of industrial sabotage. Every job was the same, a factory safe holding a payroll overnight. Yes, but... But what? Oh, we wouldn't get that sort of thing here. I mean, they had Algeria and so on. And our political extremists are just crackpot, surely. That's the general belief, but a crackpot front can be very useful. All right, so? So we've got to check on whether the same thing's happening here. Thank you. How? Well, we already keep a watch on the well-known figures and a number of lesser-known ones, all wealthy and powerful men. Yes? But they know they're being watched. If they're involved in anything like this, the chain of command has so many links, we just get wound up in it. So we want to start at the other end, Get in at the bottom. All right. Well, where do we find it? In those, I think. You see, there's another rather interesting pattern which has emerged. The police have caught a number of people. The gang haven't got away with it entirely. But they're all small-time crooks, just cannon fodder. And I remember this uh, robbery. I know the man who was caught. Teddy Burton, a layabout. He couldn't rob a money box on his own. Yeah, they're all the same. Petty criminals are way out of their class. They do their part of the job. Kosher night watchman, Jimmy open the back door. But if the police show up, they're just left. Holding the baby. Well, that doesn't please them, surely. Well, I don't suppose it does. But they either don't talk like Elijah Jones, or if they do talk like your friend Teddy Burton... They don't they know don't nothing. Exactly. They're just picked up casually for the job, then they're left to roast. Yes. You notice anything? More patterns. Well, the recent ones are all in London. Yeah, they moved on from Birmingham last month. The reports are all very much the same. Petty crooks, of course, who've kept out of trouble for a while. So they've been brought up on a minor charge when the case has either been dismissed or they've been put on probation. Conditional discharge, yeah. And all in the same magistrate's court. Yes, that's what I noticed. Everything seems to start there. <laughs> Found 
the case proved. Is there anything known about the prisoner? Yes, sir. There are 17 previous convictions. All the same kind of theft? Uh, no, sir. The last three were for drinking offences. At one time, this man was an alcoholic. Uh, the others are for robbery. The prisoner has served five sentences, totaling seven years and four months. Mm. Has the probation officer seen this man? I have, sir. Ah, oh, there you are, Mr. Markham. Uh, have you? Uh, would you like to come and tell me about him, please? Thank you, Constable. I've had a long talk with the prisoner, sir. He's been entirely cooperative and frank with regard to this charge. Nishak is a naturalized British citizen of Polish birth. He came to this country with his father in 1946 when he was 15. They'd both been pre uh, freed the previous year from a concentration camp in Germany. The father obtained work as a locksmith in Birmingham and the son became apprenticed to the same trade. They lived together until 1950 when the boy left home after his father married again. Oh, incidentally, sir, the first wife, Nishak's mother, had died in the concentration camp. I see. Well, he then came to London where he got into bad company and started drinking heavily. He served a number of sentences, mainly for burglary offences, and eventually became an alcoholic. In 1958, he was sent to hospital where he was cured completely of his alcoholism, and since that time, he's been in regular employment as a motor mechanic. Yes, and what about this offence? Well, apparently, sir, he was unjustly accused of stealing by his foreman, which led to a fight. Nijak walked out of his job and uh, started drinking again. His landlady gave him notice when he came home drunk, which is why he came to be wandering about on that particular night. But he was not entirely penniless. He had some shillings in his pocket. Yes, sir, but he tells me he has no recollection of stealing the money from the newspaper store. The man was drunk, in fact. Well, Mr. Markham... Well, sir, I think this man made a quite remarkable recovery over the past few years. It's tragic that he should have slipped back in this way. However, should you consider taking a certain course, I'm confident that he can be put back on the path again. This time, I hope permanently. Yes, Mr. Markham, I hope so too, permanently. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <coughs> this year, with the record that you have, there's very little doubt but that I ought to send you to prison again. It was a very mean type of theft, and there's absolutely no excuse for it. However, I'm impressed by the probation officer's words on your behalf, and I'm going to put you under his supervision for a year. You know very well what will happen if you do not obey the terms of that order. You do understand me? Yes, sir, I understand. Thank you. Well, listen very carefully to the conditions of the order that the learned clerk will read out of the court to you. By the order of this court, you will be placed under the supervision of the probation officer. <laughs> I should have got two years. It just goes to show what a bit of influence can do. I'd taken a good look around the court while I was stuck in that box, but I'd recognized nobody, which didn't surprise me. Stock had figured that the court was being used as a market for picking up cheap bargains. Small-time operators, use once and discard. I was the cheap bargain. Now we were waiting for someone to make an offer. Please. Looking for someone? No, why? Oh, just thought you were looking for someone, that's all. No. Oh, sorry, dear. I didn't think I was crying. It's all right. Uh, you come from the courts? Oh, it's all right, dear. Most of them pop in here for a cup of tea afterwards. I mean, it's only natural. Your mouth gets all dry when you've been up before the beak. You seem to know a lot about it. Oh, I've been up there once or twice. I'm not ashamed to admit it. After all, we all get found out sooner or later, don't we? You got off, then? Probation. Ah, oh, that's all right. You'll be able to straighten yourself out. Got a job? No. What to do? Anything, anything mechanical. Oh, well, there are plenty of jobs going around here. Got digs? This Salvation Army hostel down the road. Well, it's clean, isn't it? Yes, it's clean. Thank you. How much? Uh, five pence, love. Thank you. Hey. Yes? What's your name? 
Now look, mister, I've done right, I'm not a copper. Sit down. What do you want, then? I'm offering you a job, maybe. I heard you say you were a mechanic, didn't I? That's all right. It's like a little garage around the corner. I'll be let down by a fella. It's supposed to start this morning. Where you work? In a garage in Hammersmith until a few weeks ago. I worked there nearly two years. Why'd you leave, then? I had a row with the foreman. Yeah? Well, you get on all right with my bloke. As long as you do your work properly. Now, what's your name? Nishiak. Piotr Nishiak. What sort of language is that? Polish. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? If you don't mind, I'll call you Polsky. I don't mind. Well, I'll Polsky, we'll give it a try, eh? Eight o'clock sharp, union rates, you got cards? Yes. We'll start tomorrow morning, then. Just, uh, one thing. I heard you say you were in court this morning. I don't know what it's, I don't want to know what it's all about. It's your business, but, uh, I just want to make it quite clear that, uh, I don't tolerate any larks at my place, all right? That's I could get somebody from the Labour Exchange, but I've got a lot of work on. I don't want to be let down again. I like the look of you. I'll take a chance on you. All right? Yes, thank you. Mr... Uh, Hicks, is that name? Hicks. There's my card. Report to my foreman, Jack Burke, tomorrow morning. Eight o'clock. Thank you, sir. Come on in, cop. This is Six Garage. Yeah, this is it. I'm Jack Bird, foreman. Joe Dunning. Nishak, uh, Piotr Nishak. Yeah, well, Mr. X told us. We'll call you Polsky too, OK? <laughs> cup of tea? Thank uh, you. Give him a cup, Joe. Get them a set of overalls. Or we'll start the day off with a cup of tea. Thank you. Hey, old boy. Not like your mother makes, but better near getting the old gaff, I'll bet. Yes, it is. Thank you. Well, you'll be able to shift out of there now. You've got a job, haven't you? Yourself some new digs. Yes, I will. Huh? Start as orders. <sighs> ah, you hang on. We always get the working gear on in case the governor shows up early, got me? Uh, what time is dinner? When you hear the whistle from the factory next door. One o'clock. Tell her I'll see you. Come on, Joe. Hello, Porridge? Yeah, that's me. Is he there? Put me through, will you? Hello, sir. Yes, it's my lunch break. No, no, I'm well away. I, I said I had to go back to the hostel for something. I sound fed up? Well, I am fed up. 
I've been working down hard this morning. Oh, well, have you ever tried lifting a gearbox out of a three-ton truck? Joe, stop bellyaching. Well, for goodness sake, a bit of honest toil won't do any harm. Well, it all sounds very respectable, but I still think we're on the right track. It was just a bit too pat the way he picked you up. You will stay with it and keep your eyes and ears open. I have an idea that somewhere in that garage there is a link with a general in Paris and Elijah Jones. The all you've got to do is to find it. Okay. Five sixteen. Oh, come on, knock it off. Come on, knock it I've got a job of work to do. Ah, well, here we go. Oh, come on, knock it off. Come on, knock it off. Come on, knock it off. Come on, knock it uh, sorry, there's nobody around here but the boys. They wouldn't know uh, who I was talking to. Yeah, it went all smooth as silk, no trouble at all. i have even given a go ahead on tonight's job. Ah, uh, Jones is going to be off sick for a long while, I'm afraid. Yeah, I've got a replacement for you, know. Yeah, first class mechanic. Nah, he knows nothing. Yeah, when he does, it's going to be too late, isn't it? Yeah, good operator. Hey, now all of this Polsky, we call it Polsky, all he knows is that he's required to work late this evening. Yeah, he doesn't know why he's working late. <laughs> well, you look a bit pale to me. I don't think this honest toil agrees with you. Ah, the trouble is I get so much grease all over me, I've rubbed two layers of skin off already. That's why I look pale. I should be getting down to the bone shortly. Uh, I know you've got to get to work. <laughs> Thank you. Well, how's it going? Fine, if nothing to report is fine. Still nothing, eh? Well, on top, it's a perfectly respectable business. Hicks probably fiddles the books at night and they may respray the odd crate. But... Don't sit down. That's my best chair. Sorry, sir. That's all right. No sign of the boss figure, eh? Nope, only Hicks. No, he's not the one we want. Oh, never mind. Perhaps this night work will give you a point out. How did that come up? Quite casually and suddenly. I was told I could have the morning off, but they'd want me to work late. You think there's something brewing? I guess only tea. I don't get it. They've been quiet now for over a month. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Perhaps something will happen tonight. Do you want me to call you? No, it's not worth the risk. How are you getting on with Hicks? Well, I treat Hicks like a kind-hearted boss. I behave like a reformed crook who wants to make good, and now he's been given a chance. Berg and Dunning, uh, well, they treat me as though I'm a, a foreigner and it's not my fault. And I'm slightly grateful to them as though I realize it. Good. Well, stick to your cover story and you should be all right. Right. Well, uh, I'd better be getting back. Yeah. And look after yourself. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello, Nick. Hello. I uh, just stopped by to pick up my ticket. Oh, I've got it here for you. First class. Oh, the chief's waiting to see you. Now, where are you going? Bermuda. Morning, Chief. Morning, Craig. Sit down. I uh, just saw Miller going out. Yes, he's having a rough time. Now, yeah. what's his assignment in Bermuda? Uh, you're going to Bermuda to join a tramp steamer as a stoker. Hello. Yeah, right. We're coming out. Right, fine. Polsky. Going out on a job. Break down? No, crash. Better take that wrench. We might need it. These here. I start up the truck. We won't need it. We'll take the van. 
Has it been fixed? Sure. Jack fixed it today. Right, come on. somewhere and the boys are here, I don't know. Okay, got the tools? I'll see. Be with you in a minute. Okay. What is going on? Where is the crash? There isn't one. And what are we doing here? I'm gonna break into this factory. What are you talking about? Keep your me. temper, Polsky. You're in it now. I am not. What are you gonna do? Call the police. No, I won't. You can do what you want, but I want no part of it. You know what I get for this? Sure I do. That's what I meant when I said you're in it. Those tools have got your dabs on. They have yours too. No, boy. Only yours. So if you want to call the whole thing off, it's okay. We haven't done anything. We're just doing a job. Somebody went to a lot of bother to set this up for us. If we have to leave, we'll leave the tools, won't we? What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to be a locksmith, aren't you? Open doors. First, we've got to fix a watchman. I'm not hurting you anyone. You do as you're told. He's in an office at the back. It's all bolted and barred. If you try to break in, you sound the alarm, understand? Yes. I'll go to the gate, ring the bell. As soon as he comes out, hit him hard. Use a wrench. Get the keys, open up. I might kill him. That'll be too bad, will it? Come on. I knew you wouldn't have a key. All right, Polsky, get to work. Make it snappy. There's a safe on the inside of there. We want to get at it. I have no tools. You'll find all you want in here. And act a bit more cooperative, understand? I have no choice. That's right. You've got no choice. From then on, it was too risky for me to move anywhere. Fortunately, I had to report regularly to the probation officer. And this gave us a chance to get together. You know, it's a funny thing, but for a moment last night, I felt just as powerless, as desperate as, as if I'd been Polsky. I was trapped. I couldn't have gone to the police. No, they certainly got you on the hook. Or Polsky, right on the hook. I take it there's a real Polsky, by the way. Oh, yes, with exactly the same record as you had read out in court. Except that he never did slip back after his cure. He got married. He's living happily up north somewhere. He does the occasional special job for us. Does he know we're using uh, his name? Of course, we had to get his permission. He didn't mind. He's got no friends or relatives in London. Well, this is another addition to his record. And a very efficient one, too, I may say. You took just over 9,000, in case you didn't know. I didn't. Extraordinary things this fellow keeps in his office. <laughs> well, when's the payout? Tonight, I'm on late shifts. Do you know how much you're getting? No. Hmm. You want to pinch him at the payoff? There's no point. The man at the top I'm after. Hicks probably knows him. He probably does, but you know evidence to show that he does. None. Exactly. 
Hicks himself probably takes orders from yet another stooge. No, this is a well-layered organization, and somehow we've got to break through the layers. All right. How? Well, to a certain extent, you'll have to play it by ear. Exactly. But well, there's nothing like the direct approach. Suppose you just ask to see the boss. Now, why should I want to do that? Because you're not satisfied with your record. No, I don't think that'd work. Hicks and the boys would just give me a good beating to teach me a lesson. I don't see it'd be any problem to him. In the ordinary run, it wouldn't be. But if this setup's what we believe it to be, then everyone is going to be extremely sensitive about anyone talking. I'll make damn sure I see the error of my ways. Yeah. I'm afraid they will. So be very careful. <whistles> There we are, then. Another good night's work, eh? Thanks very much, Scott. Money the jam, innit? Went off nice and smooth. Polsky in yet? Come in just now. He was in a right old state last night, though. How's he tonight, then? He's like a bear with a sore head. Send him in, will you? Right, Scott. Polsky, the governor wants you. Hello, Polsky. Sorry we had to break you in like that last night, but it was the only way, wasn't it? I mean, if I told you beforehand, you wouldn't have known what to do, would you? I would have known. Oh, come on, you wouldn't have shopped us. Besides, you'd have done yourself out on a, a lucrative few hours graft, wouldn't you? There you are, 200 in there. Little bonus on that uh, special job we did. 200, what you take me for? There must have been 10,000 pounds in that safe. 10 grand? You're a funny fellow, Polsky. You seem to forget that two weeks ago you were nicking pennies from a paper store. So what? I never asked to come into this. I was press ganged into it. Never mind, you're in it. All right, I'm in it. So I want my proper rake off. Union rates for the job, remember? You have been well paid for what you did. Well paid? 200 pounds. You know how much prison I get for doing this job? That's not my concern, is it? Well, it is mine. Now listen, Hicks, you picked the wrong man when you picked me. Just because I am a Polak, it doesn't mean to say I am stupid. Now, if I am coming back into this game, it has to be worth my while. I want to know I have something behind me for the misery of it. Not just a few bags of peanuts. <laughs> Give you another 50. You're not the only one in this, you know. Somebody else had to set this up for us. I know you're not the top man. If that is what you're trying to tell me, you haven't got the brains. So who is he? That is what I want to know. Because he's too greedy. And I want to see him. You talk to me. I want to see the organ grinder, not the monkey. I take this in advance. A 50% advance. But next time, I want more. There's no next time, Polsky. This is up to you. It suits me to get out now. But I want more money. Nobody gets out, you misunderstand. We got a troublemaker amongst us. Wants to shop us? I never said anything about that. You're making trouble. 
We don't like it. garage about your car. Hicks? Why can't he speak to the chauffeur? Oh, very well, I'll see him. Sir. Good morning, Hicks. You wanted to see me? I'm sorry about this, Mr. Meadow. Sir, I think you ought to be. What the devil do you think you're playing at? Don't you know the police keep a watch on me here? Yeah, well, I'm using the firm's truck. I'm just a man from the garage calling, I see. I use the back door. All right, all right. What is it? Well, there's a spot of trouble I thought you ought to know about. Trouble? What trouble? Well, this last chap I put on. The man who called Polsky? Yeah. He did his job very well? Yeah, very well. So well, he... He wants double pay, sir. Then you should discourage him. Yeah, well, we tried that, sir, but... But what? I'm not telling me that you cannot deal physically with one man. Well, we give him a good beating up, sir, but he's crazy. He seems to like it. He comes back for more. He was brought up in a concentration camp, you see. He was what? In Germany. He's a Polak. His, his family were in camp and, uh, and his father were released. You fool! Well, what, what for? The hell of a man like that. A troublemaker. A communist. What's this man threatening to do? Talk? Well, so far, all he said is he wants to see the boss. There you are, you see. Already he knows that he's on something bigger than your little gang. Well, that's why I thought I ought to see you. I'm afraid he might get on a booze again and let something slip, sir. You idiot! You couldn't have made a bigger mess of this if you tried. Our whole system is to keep the organization in small cells, so that if one's broken up, the rest can keep on functioning. Well, all we've got to do is pay him, sir. A drunk? A man who thinks he's onto a good thing and come back for more? Then we get rid of him. Yes, Hicks, we will. But remember this. If he'd said anything to anybody, we could have broken up the cell. But you, with your exquisite genius for putting your foot in it, would have done more. What, You sir? think that your visit here is going to go unremarked by the police? Just a garage man, you say, calling about the car. Very well. And what a charming coincidence, isn't it? The garage that services my car is found to be run by a gang of crooks. 
Don't you think it's going to occur to anybody to connect the movement with these robberies? I'm sorry, sir. You would be, Hicks. Very sorry. We are only a part of the movement. But if I were to go, there are still plenty of others who will see to it that indiscipline does not go unpunished. What should I do, sir? Get hold of this Polsky again before the fool does start drinking. What will I tell him? Tell him. Why, that we shall pay, of course. We shall pay. <laughs> You. I got your message. Well, I'm here. The money. It's 500 pounds, count it. I trust you. It's about the right anyway. That's a payment in full. I'll stay away from you. Do you want me to stay away? That is a pity. I was just beginning to like the job now that I have a race, I mean. Don't push me anymore, Polsky. Why not? You obviously need a bit of pushing. It does a lot for you. I told you before that's your lot. Now you're getting out or what? Okay, if you're sacking me, but uh, in that case, I think I should have a bit more. I mean, it's a bit short notice to get another job. You've had all you're gonna get. Oh, come on, Hicks. How about another hundred pounds instead of notice? A sort of uh, golden handshake. I'll think about it. That's right. You think about it. Because I've rumbled your little game, didn't I? You have been keeping half the boys cut for yourself. No. Well, I think you have. And you don't want the boss to know about it, do you? Or the boys? Get out. All right, I go. But I want that other hundred. You leave a message at the pub, I come around. Or if you like, I negotiate with the boss himself. No? Okay. Oh, uh, and just in case you're thinking I'm making a bit of a nuisance of myself, well, I realized I was in a difficult position, so I wrote a letter. Blowing the whole gaff. To be sent to the police in case of my sudden death or disappearance. A letter? Who's got it? Someone I can trust. Someone a long way from here, so uh, don't get any ideas, will you, Hicks? So long. I ought to have you killed. Well, I was, I don't know. The man's a lunatic. The whole movement is in danger because you entangled us with him. Ah, he's bluffing about the letter. Is he? It's just a sort of cunning trick that somebody like that would play. The man's vicious. Well, we send the boys after him. Beat it out of him. You'll beat nothing out of him. He's mental. The more you beat him, the more he'll clam up. Then we'll kill him. We can't until we know where the letter is. Well, somebody must have it. But who? Well, I don't know. He's his landlady, perhaps. Said he'd moved his digs. Well, he could have left it with her. Wouldn't be likely to leave it with a complete stranger. Well, who could he have left it with? He's got no friends, relatives. Exactly, Mr. Clever Hicks. The others that we used all had wives, families. that could have been made to suffer for their indiscretion. Well, somebody... When I find that letter, I want to deal with Polsky myself. He should have got his in a concentration camp like the rest of them did. Get everybody out. Have him followed whenever he goes. Right, sir. I'll make my own inquiries about Mr. Polsky. Shall I send a message to him, sir? Of course. Tell him that we'll pay. What? You're not going to pay him again? Naturally. We well, can't keep on paying him. Don't bandy words with me, Hicks. The order of events is perfectly simple. First, we find the letter. Then we get him here to pay him. And then we kill him. And not for the money, for the principle.
Put him through. Miller, where are you? You all right? I'm all right, but they've been tailing me. This is the first chance I've had to contact you. What's happening? I'm not sure. I'm afraid they're just going to pay me off. I've got a message to go around to the garage tonight to get my cards. Well, don't push them too hard. I don't like the way you keep getting away with this. Just take the money and call it a day. Now, there's nothing to worry about as long as they think I've got that letter. I'm quite safe. I don't take any chances. OK, sir. Miller? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Is there something wrong? Yes. Miller's been getting on top of those boys too easily. Are they paying up? Yes. They've been giving in to him all along the line, and I don't like it. The story must have got through to the head man by now, and whoever he is, he's very clever. Miller thinks this letter idea will keep him safe, but I'm not so sure. Polsky, what a money. Well, let's make a little deal, eh? Where's the letter? I tell my fr friend to destroy it as soon as I get the money. Well, that's very nice, very nice, but hardly satisfactory, is it? I mean, I don't know if this friend of yours exists, do I? Where does he live, for a stop? I told you, a long way from here. Where? In the Midlands? Birmingham, perhaps? That's all right, to Birmingham. That's funny. It's just what we worked out. What are you talking about? Well, naturally, we were interested. We wanted who was close enough to you for you to trust with such an important letter. So we went to Birmingham and we found your friend. Now, quit bluffing, Hicks. Have you got the money or not? Of course I got the money. I got your friend, too. So you can deliver the message about the letter personally. Now. That is not my son, Piotr. I've never seen this man. And he doesn't even understand Polish. Uh, all right. Oh. Stay right where you are. And you stay where you are, Mr. Polsky. I really can't let you leave your poor old father like that when he's in such obvious distress. His niece's father doesn't know him from Adam. What are you talking about? That's old Nishak there. This isn't young Nishak. Can't even understand Polish. The old man's senile. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Sapirency! Sapirency! Leave him alone. What he says is true. I'm not his son. Then who are you, Mr. Polsky? Well, my name's John Smith, as a matter of fact. What's yours? Hicks here is so ignorant, he never introduces anyone. My name is Smith, too. Ah. Well, perhaps we're related. Perhaps. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a traveling salesman for a firm that sells spanners. Now, shall we stop playing games, Mr. Polsky? By all means, Mr. Minto. You realize that you just signed your death warrant? Why, well, I don't know. That's a bit dramatic, isn't it? You wanted to stop playing games? Well, let's do that. I'm a police officer. I came here to find the leader behind a gang of payroll thieves, and I found him. Mr. Edward Minto. Prominent industrialist and society leader. All those glossy magazines are going to miss you. Why should they do that? I've only to press this trigger. Well, you can if you like. It rather depends on whether you prefer hanging to a spell in jail. That goes for all of you, by the way, including you, Berg, and you too, Dunning. It's time up and make a break for it. I don't want to get top for killing a copper. Shut up. Well, he has got a point there, you know. You ought to bear it in mind too, Dunning. After all, you boys are only the dupes. I mean, you didn't even know this was a political setup, did you? Well, it's all extra time for you. I don't suppose you either of you... keep your mouth shut. Don't be a fool, Minto. The place is surrounded. Pull that trigger and you'll kill five men, not one. I'll oh, better check up. He's still bluffing. I'll oh, go and take a look. All right. You want to play the charade through to the end? You gain only a few minutes, Grace, my friend. First you, and then the old man. Please, please. And no one will know. Please, please, sir. I have not done anything. You shouldn't have done that. Now I know there's no one outside. Mice! I'd rather hang. Oh, there were no killings! Oh, the general, let me. Come on, you. 
I'm sorry, old man. Bert. Yeah? Thanks. I don't go for killings, black boy. Carter, get that first aid box. You all right? I'm fine. What are you doing here, anyway? I thought you were a bit too confident. I didn't want to take any chances. Come on, I can manage it easier when you're sitting up. Oh, no, that's all right. I can walk. That was a lousy trick, pulling the old boy in like that. Yes. But he might have been my father. I do not understand. I do not understand. It's a long story, Mr. Nishak. Now, let's get you to the hospital for a checkup, and I'll come along and try and explain everything to you later. But I want to know now about my son. Why did that man pretend to be Piotr? Your son gave us permission to use his identity. He's right, Piotr. He's not mixed up in this. There, there's no trouble. None at all. Your son was helping us. But we didn't think you would be involved. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. I have had worse things happen. I was only worried that my son was mixed up with these people. And when I saw that man impersonating him, I thought he was dead. No, no. He's well and happy and in no trouble at all. Now, Miss Carter will take you to the hospital and I'll make sure he comes to see you. I'm sorry. I'm so relieved. You understand. I have not seen my son. It's I who am sorry, Mr. Nishak. Come on. Carter, take my car and drive Mr. Nishak to St. Stephen's Hospital. You will see Piotr. Yes, 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 I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that. You did a good job. A good job? An old man's beaten and I did a good job. Oh, it was easy for me. Supposing I really had been Polsky. It's not a bad thing sometimes for us to be on the other side of the fence for a while. It keeps us human. We see that black isn't always black or white, white. Yes, all right. Crime is a vicious web. When you find it, you can smash it. You can destroy the spider. What about the flies pulled into it? The struggling victims? They're caught up in the web. They're part of it. And that is the tragedy. Thank you. 